Every week this year, I am pulling off some of the many, many books that I have on my bookshelf and creating a piece of mixed media art inspired by them. Hello, it's so nice to see you today. I hope you're doing well and that you've done something nice for yourself today. Personally, I'm enjoying a really nice cup of warm licorice tea because suddenly it doesn't feel very much like summer here in Vancouver. It's cold and raining and it feels more like winter. Today's video is going to take us on a bit of a journey. I can trace a direct connection between these two books, but this story really starts many, many years ago in the dark ages of the last century when I was first learning how to weave. I learned to do a style of weaving called backstrap weaving and my, my weaving teacher called this one in particular a Oaxacan band. And at the time I had never, I had not even heard of Oaxaca. But I made a promise to myself that I would go there one day, but it took me many, many years before I actually did get there. Time went by, I got married, we had kids, and my kids grew into teenagers. And then one day I was thinking, I would like to go on a bit of an adventure and do a craft in another country. And as I was searching the internet, I came across this company that offered weaving trips. And they went to all kinds of quite wonderful sounding locations all over the world. And they also, as it turned out, did a trip to a place called Salt Spring Island, which is really spitting distance from where I live. And now I don't really need to go on a group tour to go to Salt Spring. I can just hop on a ferry and be there in a couple of hours. But the same group also offered a trip to Oaxaca. Yes, Oaxaca, I've forgotten all about that place. It wouldn't be possible for me to actually go to Oaxaca, that place that I dreamt about and knew nothing about so many years ago. Well, I called them up on my birthday, as it turned out, and I booked my trip and there you go. I went to Oaxaca and I got to spend a week in the Zapotec community of Teotitlan, which is an indigenous village outside Oaxaca City, and I wove this rug. It's the story of my trip, and here are some of the photos that inspired the images in the rug. And the book that I that I chose for this week, Zapotec Weavers, it's about the weavers of Teotitlan, where I stayed, and in this this fellow is Felipe Hernandez. He is the head of the family of weavers. And in the book, it's kind of funny because it talks about Felipe's teenage son, Victor, who was girl crazy at the time. And Victor was one of one of our weaving teachers. He's now an adult with, with a teenage daughter of his own. And I can tell you that that trip led directly to this book. So this is a catalog for a weaving project that I was invited to participate in. They'd selected 10 different weavers and they paired us up with graphic designers and we did a big exploration around Muslim and First Nations traditions and created a series of prayer rugs that accompanied an exhibit called Paradise Has Many Gates that was in the form of a chain link mosque. And this is the rug that my daughter and I wove as a part of that project. If I had not gone to Teotitlan, if I had not gone and woven that rug in Teotitlan, I don't think I would have had the confidence to say yes to doing this project. And this is the loom that I wove my rug on. It's called a rigid heddle loom. And I had a comment from a, a subscriber from Minnesota and this particular Rigid Heddle Loom is made by a company called Becca and they're based in Minneapolis. So there's a connection there. And, and there's myself, my daughter and the graphic designer that we worked with to make the rug. And if you notice that there are some textured shapes going up the middle of the piece, well, those represent different symbols. There's a butterfly as well as several others. And I think of these as my personal symbols. And we call, we titled our piece, Find What You Need, because those symbols can have many different meanings in different 
belief systems and delete different traditions, but I've been thinking that I want to make myself a rubber stamp that uses those symbols. So that's what this video is about. And although the background piece there is woven, somehow there's no video about it. So I'm just going to show you how I'm going to carve my stamp. So this is carving material. It's called Easy Cut or Safety Cut. It's like lino, but it's soft like an eraser. And I'm using these micro wood carving tools and they come in different qualities and different styles. And the type I like, I bought them from a Canadian company called Lee Valley Tools. And I've drawn out my design and I know that I talk a lot about not planning things in advance, but you know, if I wanted all the shapes to fit onto my piece, I did have to do some planning. So I drew out a little schematic and then I drew the shapes onto my piece of, of eraser material before I started carving them out. And you just put the lightest amount of pressure on and it carves them out. And now I'm doing a test, test, test run here to see how the stamp is going to look. And let's see, let's see. So it's like a, a bit of a proof. You can see some other stamps that I've done there just to see how it looks. And if I like it, I can leave it as it is. And if I don't, I can make modifications to it. I decided I wanted to round off the corners and then just like you would with an eraser, I'm erasing the sharp edges on the corners. And I'm fiddling around a little bit more with it before I decide to call it done. And let's have a look. Let's do one more stamp and see how this one looks. I have to push quite hard, <laughs> push down quite hard. My ink pads don't get used very often and they're not the juiciest there and I think that looks pretty good so there are my symbols a circle an eye a butterfly a house a tree a fish and a diamond and that red fish uh, has come up a few other times over the years and maybe one day I'll make a video that talks about the significance of the red fish in the river to to myself and as a symbol and once again i'm so happy that you watched my video through to the end and i hope to see you again really soon bye for now